Hello everyone, welcome back for yet another Star Trek The Official Starships Collection. In front of me now I have issue number 72, the infamous USS Enterprise NCC-1701A, like my namesake. Um, as usual we have the uh, ship and magazine here, so I'll put the uh, ship aside, it looks pretty cool so far. And let's get to the magazine. Alright, issue 72. Very, very cool image of the ship on the cover there. Um, it is the Enterprise 1701A. Constitution class, of course. Monson 2286, 305 meters long, and 21 decks. Turning the page, you have a uh, the usual contents and the stand assembly, which is pretty much the same as issue number two. And the specification page, which is here, it is again 1701A, Constitution Class, Boston 2286, retired or decommissioned in 2293. Uh, it is 305 meters long, 21 decks, a crew of 430, with a top speed of warp 8 estimated. Has nine dual phaser banks, two photon torpedo launchers, and its captain is none other than James T. Kirk himself. Turn the page, you have a nice image of the ship there, which is different than this one, as well as some text. You can see the galley from Star Trek VI and Lieutenant Valeris in the back of Spock. Got a little history about that from Star Trek IV onwards. Here's a screenshot from Star Trek V and, of course, Star Trek VI and their history about the ship down here. And here are the ship plans which look very similar to the little schematic and layout that Scotty was looking at while he was drinking his coffee uh, on the, uh, in the dining lounge on the Enterprise A in Star Trek VI. So that's kind of cool. And here's the scene of the Enterprise leaving space dock in Star Trek VI. Now it is rumored that this ship was once the Yorktown because the many fan questions is how did they build a ship so fast during all that time? Um, and many people think it is the uh, Yorktown, which is the ship that was seen adrift, or actually it wasn't seen, it was just mentioned that the Yorktown was adrift, uh, and, and the captain was on the view screen in Starfleet headquarters saying that he used a makeshift solar sail to keep his crew and his, uh, and his life support running alive, uh, you know, while they waited out the probe. So yeah, and here is a section on the filming the model of the Enterprise A. Uh, apparently they repainted it, rewired it, made some, some, some slight alterations, but it's pretty much the same model as the, uh, as the uh, refit from Star Trek The Motion Picture. And here is a section uh, with Nicholas Meyer talking about Star Trek 4 and 6, of which the two films he had a huge involvement. And now he is uh, involved in the uh, new Star Trek series, Star Trek Discovery, coming out in January. So that's kind of interesting and cool at the same time. Got some screenshots from Star Trek 4. And a section on Star Trek 4 and 6 as well. In the back, more text and screenshots. And more history and screenshots. And the on-screen appearance page. Its first appearance was at the tail end of Star Trek for the voyage home its final appearance was in Star Trek 60 undiscovered country the ship was designed by Andrew Probert and Richard Taylor um, I always loved that scene of the Enterprise at warp in Star Trek 6 and uh, observers will note that uh, David Warner appeared in two consecutive back-to-back -back Star Trek movies. He appeared as the Federation ambassador in Star Trek V, and of course he is the, or he was the famous Klingon Chancellor Gorkin seen in Star Trek VI. So yeah, that's the magazine. Love that image of the A right there at the center of the galaxy. And next month, or this month, or actually, yeah, the month of September, we will be getting, or I will be getting, issue number 73, the Borg Renegade ship, seen in Descent Part 1 and 2. So that ought to be kind of cool. And on the back, have the uh, image of the Enterprise A, which is nice. So let's put this aside and look at the uh, model. All right, let's have a look at the ship itself. Here it is, moment of truth, the Enterprise A. 
Looks a little bit better than its predecessor, so let's see. First impression. Yeah, it's not too bad. They got the color right this time. Uh oh. My registry on the uh, back of the bridge there is a little bit smeared. I'll have to order a replacement. Pretty cool. Got the registry underneath the saucer there. And the Enterprise, they got that on there. The nacelles definitely look better. Um, we got the registry on the inside and outside of the uh, nacelles themselves. You can see the NCC1701A. Uh, this time the nacelles are actually blackened instead of blue. Um, personally, a uh, minor quibble, I wish they had pretty much taken the Reliant nacelles and put them on here, uh, at least the molding, because those nacelles were spot on. They were a little bit thicker uh, and the front ends of them were far better looking in my opinion and look more screen accurate um, the paint detail on this is it's pretty cool it's all right uh, you can see the separation in the in the uh, model of course the joint points uh, the, the saucer is metal and the star drive section of course is the engineering section is plastic uh, got the blue so you can see the warp nacelle, the warp engines there. Uh, kind of a bummer that the shuttle bay is just kind of painted over with a red square, no lines or anything. Um, and you can see the Starfleet pendant and the font there. It says Starship USS Enterprise, United Federation of Planets. The pendant is actually a little bit too dark, but that's, you know, that's all right. The deflector dish is a little bit dark. Um... Uh, should be lighter or maybe it's just the lighting um, but overall it's all right it's it's a significant improvement over the enterprise refit but that's okay um, I think this rounds up all of the available enterprises from the original enterprise all the way up well the annex 01 all the way up until the enterprise E uh, I'm sure I think the enterprise J is somewhere on the pipeline so I guess we'll be getting that soon at some point um, and this is pretty cool it's all right better but still could definitely use some improvements uh, you know this is definitely one to have if you're at least getting all the enterprises and I've always liked the enterprise a more than the original um, but it looks good it looks nice um, there could be more paint here on the nacelles struts and so on and you know some obvious coloring issues with the font uh the cells and the pendant there but in the shuttle bay mainly um but overall it's it's fair um happy with it i'm glad we finally got it and uh as usual the model comes with the stand and on the back it says uss enterprise ncc 1701a and put this bad boy in here and it mounts pretty much like its predecessor, just like that. So yeah, next month in September, which will actually be two days from now, I uh, look forward to sharing with you, uh, let's see, the Borg Renegade ship and uh, whatever, whatever other ship that I get in that batch. So until then, live long and prosper. Please be safe. Happy 50th Star Trek anniversary. And take care of yourself, and I'll catch you guys later.